we'll move on to the next talk. We're coming back to a homegrown product of Frankfurt uh, and talk about uh, teclatosphere plus sophosphere with or without ribavirin for the treatment of hep C patients um, with severe liver disease. This is an interim analysis, and Tanya Wetzel is going to present. Thank you. Chairman, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for the invitation to present uh, data from the European Compassionate Use Program. Uh, treatment of HCV-infected patients with advanced liver disease remains a challenge. The combination of daclatasvir and sofosbuvir has been investigated together with ribavirin in the early study program that also included patients with advanced liver disease. An extensive early access program provided access to daglatasphere prior to approval to over 7,000 patients with chronic HCV infection and urgent treatment uh, indications without other treatment options. Here we report an interims analysis from the European Compassionate Use Program that was conducted in five European countries, Germany, Austria, Netherlands, Sweden and Norway. Patients were eligible for inclusion if they had a high risk for hepatic decompensation or death within 12 months if left untreated, untreated and had no available treatment options. Daclatasvir was provided for six months, so Fosbovir and ribavirin had to be prescribed. The data cut was on March 16, and at this time the population included 482 patients. Uh, the, getting to the analysis, um, demographics and safety analysis was based on the entire cohort and um, the primary analysis was based on all patients who had reached post-treatment 12 uh, at the time of the data cut and the subgroup analysis only includes patients with available results. Let's have a look at the demographic characteristics Overall, at the time of the data cut, there were 482 patients enrolled. 75% were treated with daclatasvir and sofosbuvir, and 25% had received additionally ribavirin. The mean age was 57 years. Um, most of the patients were male and white. 26% um, of the patients had uh, high viral loads, over 2 million. HCV genotype 1 was the predominant genotype. Um, with an equal subtype distribution between genotype 1A and 1B. There was also a substantial proportion of genotype 3 patients in this cohort. 75% of the patients were cirrhotic, and 42% had a child puke class B or C, and 12% uh, had MEL scores over 12%. 18% of the population had received a liver transplant, HCC was reported in 5% and 11 and 3% had HBV and HIV and HBV co-infection. Let's look at the primary efficacy analysis that's based on 155 patients that corresponds to 32% of the entire cohort. So there was overall response rates were 95% and in both of the cohorts was one patient who relapsed. In the ribavirin-containing arm, there were two patients who discontinued treatment early, and in the daglatasvir sofosbuvir group, there were four patients who had missing HCV RNA values at the time of the data cut. Let's go to the stratified analysis. Um, response rates were equally high uh, throughout all genotypes, and response rates, for example, in genotype 3 infected patients were ranged from 85% uh, to 100%, uh, numbers are small. One patient who relapsed had a genotype 1A infection, the other one had a genotype 3 infection. Also, response rates were uh, high across uh, in patients with and without liver transplantations and in patients with and without cirrhosis. Actually, both patients who relapsed had a child A liver cirrhosis. Also, when you look at the um, analysis uh, stratified by viral load, HIV co-infection, um, response rates were not significantly impacted. Also, child puke class A, B, and C did not really impact the results, but the restriction is that um, there were only few patients in the child puke C class, so that we have to wait for the final results here. 
when you look at the treatment durations, um, about 72% of the patients here were treated for 24 weeks, and um, response rates were between 97 and 99%. Fewer patients were treated for 12 weeks, and the final analysis are ongoing and will allow a better uh, comparison with regard to the treatment durations. Coming to safety, overall there were 3.3% death. Serious adverse events were, were reported in 13%. About 6% of the patients discontinued the study because of adverse events. Most common adverse events were anemia, fatigue, nausea, and headache, with most of them being more common in the ribavirin-containing group. Grade three and four laboratory abnormalities were rare and more frequent in the ribavirin-containing arm, such as uh, low hemoglobin levels or hyperbilirubinemia. The next slide shows you uh, reasons for SAEs and death. and. Um, most of the treatment emergent serious adverse events were liver-related, as were 11 of 16 deaths reported in this data set. In summary, um, the all-oral combination of daclatasvir, sofosbuvir, and ribavirin was safe and effective and has shown high response rates and uh, was also well-tolerated in this difficult-to-treat population. Um, the preliminary findings from this compassionate use program are consistent with those observed in clinical trials, and uh, full results based on the entire cohort will be presented at ASLD. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Tanya. Um, questions from the audience? Jeff? While he's getting the mic, I have one. You, you show uh, about a 6% discontinuation rate yes. above or for AEs, and typically those patients um, either go on to fail or, I guess, ended early. So is that discontinuation of all drugs or just one study drug? Or um... No, this was a treatment discontinuation. Okay. And the majority of those patients must have went on to have an SVR, given the very high SVR rates? Excuse me? The, the majority of those treatment discontinuations had an SVR? We are um, actually just analyzing this, but I'm aware of four patients who discontinued between treatment week five and eight, and they had an SVR. Mm -hmm. So it's certainly interesting to look at those patients and their characteristics. Thanks. There was a good presentation over here, um, Dr. Wells. I, I just wondered if the inclusion criteria were a patient who were at risk of death or decompensation, but about 20% of the patients didn't have cirrhosis, so that's just one aspect. So you were treating some non-cirrhotic patients. Nonetheless, across the board, these results look very good indeed. They're very encouraging. If you took the cirrhotic patients, are these results better than the SOLAR studies, SOLAR 1 and SOLAR 2, which was undertaken in, in Europe? And if so, what do you think is the difference between a soft decladosphere in, in this analysis versus the solar studies of soft lidiposphere. Is there a difference? They're really very good results in this population. Now, it could be that there are differences in the composition of the patients, uh, despite the inclusion criteria. Uh, I just wondered what your thoughts were, but they are very good results, and they seem to be somewhat better than solar. Yeah, first of all, the first point is yes, in this accord, there were um, also patients without liver cirrhosis. For example, those were patients with um, uh, lymphomas and other reason of uh, H uh, HCV-related disorders. The second point you raised is um, an interesting question because um, I always, when you have clinical trials and real-world studies, I would assume that actually um, patients who would not be enrolled for some reasons into clinical trials would probably be candidates for compassionate use programs. And so it's actually a really a good question why this could be the case. What I mean that clinical trials might have probably patients who are more compliant or better suited to adhere to the treatment. And so it's a good question, but I can't. Okay, can't. very Any, last, oh, go ahead. Does anyone yeah. have an idea? 
Actually, we can save that for the discussion because I think we're going to try to move on. After one last question, Rafael. Uh, thank you very much. Excellent presentation. So I think that Ribabrin did not impact your SVR. So in the conclusions, you say that, as usually, uh, Dacla, Sophos, Daclas plus or minus Ribabrin achieved. So one of the conclusions should be that Ribabrin did not impact no, 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 no. I, yes, I, didn't, I, didn't say, I didn't say that. I said um, <laughs> that most patients were treated in the 24-week group and that we should wait for the final results to really make a comparison between the treatment durations because the numbers in the 12-week group were small. So I think from 10 patients in the ribavirin-containing arm, we can't make a comparison to the effectiveness. So we have to look at these... Uh, uh, groups in more detail, also by genotype and cirrhosis okay. status. Thank you. Thank you. Very wise to be conservative. <laughs> 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 well